Hello and welcome to Last Row in a Pivot Table. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I was recently asked the following question. What formula can get the last row in a pivot table? And I'm gonna answer it in this video. Exercise one. In this exercise, I just wanna get warmed up with the functions that we'll use. We're gonna use the match and index functions. The match function returns the position of a matching value, whereas the index function returns a value from the position. So uh, let me just demonstrate that. Let's say I have a list of values and I wanna find Wednesday. First, let me demonstrate what the match function does. Remember, the match function returns the position of a matching value equals match. What we do is we say, I want you to go find this, comma, in here, comma, zero for exact match. Close the function and enter. And we get three. So what is this telling us? Match returns the position of the matching value. In other words, it's telling us that Wednesday is the third position or the third row within this range. If I asked it to find Monday, it's gonna return one. Tuesday is two and Friday is five. So match returns the position. Now, what does the index function do? Well, in this application, the index function is gonna return a cell value from a given position within the range. For example, equals index. So I basically say from this range, comma, return the value that's in this position. In other words, in this row. Close function and enter. So what it's saying is Friday is the fifth position within this range. So if I tell it to go find Monday, match finds the position of Monday within this range, it returns a one. The index function returns the cell value from the first row or the first position within this range. So the match function returns the position, the index function returns the cell value. Now that we're warmed up, let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. So the original question was, how do we get the last row from a pivot table? Well, we can use the match and index functions to do this. For example, assuming the last row in your pivot table has a label of grand total, we're gonna ask the match function to find grand total equals match. We wanna go find this comma in this column comma, zero for exact match. Close the function and enter. And it's saying it's in the 10th row, which looks about right. Now if we wanted to get a cell value, we're gonna use the index function, equals index. Here we wanna say from this column, comma, return the value found at this position or in this row. Close function and enter. And we get 480 and that looks right. Now, the question wasn't clear if it wanted the last row, meaning the grand total, or the last data row, meaning March. Either way, we can still use match and index. Equals match. We wanna go find grand total, comma, in this column, comma, zero for exact match. Close function and enter. Here we still get 10, but this is just returning a row number. So we could easily just subtract one from the result. Enter, and now we get nine. So then we can ask the index function to go return a value from this column, at which position? At this position. Close function and enter. And now we get the last data row, 151. So either way, we can still use index and match. But what if we didn't want all these helper columns? And what if the values change? We're gonna take a look at all that in the next exercise, exercise three. So currently we have the index function referencing the match function results, right? Equals match, go find grand total, comma, in this column, zero for exact match. And then we have the index function saying from column C, return the value from this position, enter. And that returns the grand total. If we wanted the last data row instead, we could simply subtract one from the results of the match function, and that returns 151. But we can easily combine these functions in a single formula, equals index. We wanna go get a value from column C, comma. Which row? We don't know, we need to ask the match function to figure it out. We're gonna go match grand total, comma, in here, comma zero for exact match. Close the match function, close the index function, and enter. And now we get the grand total 480. Once again, if we wanted to get the last data row, all we'd need to do is 
subtract 1 from the results of the match function. Enter. And now we get 151. And we do not need these helper cells. What if there's a new month? Well, let's go check it out. Let's go to the data tab. Let's add a new data row for April of 100. Let's go back to exercise 3. So currently, this is returning the last data row, which is March 151. Now let's update the pivot table. Right click and refresh. <laughs> April flows in, and now we get the new last row, which is April, which is 100. And that's how we can use the index and match functions to return the last row from a pivot table report. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table, and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.